Hey team, welcome to today's practice. I'm Paul, your clone coach, and I help both established and growing nurseries make the best clones ever. Join the team and transform your nursery today. Let's get into it. So how do you raise the humidity in your domes? So that's what we're gonna get into in today's video. But first, a quick story, a quick lesson really. So years and years ago, when I was probably in my first year of cloning, I made a big mistake that lost me almost an entire batch of clones, pretty much the entire batch of clones. I was in a room that had less than ideal humidity. And so I was trying to overcompensate that with maintaining the humidity that I did have in the domes um, to kind of not lose it. I left the domes on there for days and days, I believe about six days. What ended up happening is I lost pretty much all of the clones due to rot and or wilt when I started removing the domes. So there was a big lesson in that when it comes to humidity inside your domes. And the big takeaways are don't leave stagnant humidity in your domes. You wanna burp your domes and you wanna not overcompensate by trapping humidity in your domes. You wanna really adjust and correct your environment so that you don't have to play that game there. Those are the big lessons that I took away from that. Getting into today's video and today's question. How do you raise the humidity in your domes or how do you maintain the humidity in your domes? I wanna start off with your tray being full of foliage. So either that's 50 clones on a tray, 72, 78, 25, whatever that looks like, you want that canopy inside that tray to be as full as possible. That's gonna give off some moisture from the leaf surfaces to kind of aid in maintaining the humidity within your dome. So that's a great start there. So if you have less cuts, you could do uh, hardier cuts or leave a little bit more fan leaves on there. If you have a lot more clone count, then you could remove more foliage, but overall the canopy is still solid and still pretty full. You don't wanna have any overlapping leaves, but the correct environment. You wanna have your environment be about 65% humidity. If you're hitting up to 70%, that's, that's okay. If you start dipping below 60%, you're gonna to have to start overcompensating and or really being diligent about, you know, leaving the room uh, door open when you're working in there because that's gonna drop at another 10, 15%. Um, all those little things that kind of just put you in the red zone. So you wanna maintain about 65% humidity and that should be constant. You should have a nice steady constant level of humidity. You'd really wanna avoid spikes that are in, uh, you know, the double digit numbers, right? 10%, 11%, 12% swings you want to eliminate those big swings and keep that environment as steady as possible so shoot for 65 percent give or take a few points another way to make sure that you're keeping all that humidity inside your domes as you need to is just make sure you got a good seal on your domes and your trays sometimes if you're using mixed brands of trays and domes the lip and the seal just doesn't seal properly so just double check that little nuances, right? One little crack, one little seam that's, that's open could allow air to enter or humidity to leave. And then you get little dry spots and you get irregularities amongst all of the domes in your batches. So you wanna eliminate that. We wanna go for consistency and quality, right? So make sure your trays and domes are sealed properly. And lastly, you could be the one to add more moisture to your domes. So if you, you wanna be burping these domes daily. Now, when you're putting the dome back on, if you're not getting that humidity boost, when uh, you're doing the burp, you could do a spray as well. And I like to do a Xerotol spray, which is a fungicide. So it kills any pathogens on contact and the residual is just oxygen. I like to spray the stems and or foliage and or dome if you really need to add that boost to your trays and to your dome setup. So spray Xerotol on your foliage, uh, underneath your canopy on the stems or on your foliage or and or lastly on your domes. Um, and I say lastly on the domes because spraying the foliage you're actually getting some beneficial factor there, right? If there's any pathogen pressure on your stems or foliage, you're killing that on contact. You're not just adding moisture just to add moisture. If you have to spray your domes because you have, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 cuts in the, in the tray and you're not getting that boost or anything along those lines, then lastly, you could spray your domes and it'll kill anything on, on the dome surface as well. But that usually traps a lot more moisture Depends how heavy of a spray you do. But as long as you're burping daily after that and wiping the excess uh, moisture off the dome, then you should be in the clear. So I know it was simple, straightforward to the point, but I think that's a benefit for you guys to get right back in the garden and start making good clones. Please support the team by just giving a like, a comment, a subscribe below. 
because it's interact. This channel is more about you than it is me. It's for your benefit, for you to grow, and for you to make the best clones ever. If you need any help with your current clone operation, then visit clonecoach.com. There's a few different coaching packages there, and you can find what's best suited to fit your needs. Thanks for watching. Clone Coach out.